This process started when uh, I was uh, part of a focus group for the uh, Ohio Valley Youth Foundation. And um, my assignment as one of the team members was to come up with um, parent education and involvement. And um, I thought it would give teens a, a, a real voice in the community. Dear Mom and Dad. Dear Madre. Dear Daddy. Pops. Mama. Dude. I love you. I love you. I hate you. I miss you. Maybe it will be the hardest thing to have kids, but right now it's harder to be the kid. Uh, Dan called me in uh, and, and asked if I wanted to sit down and have coffee, and, and he had supported a, an organization that's near and dear to my heart, which is one of the co-sponsors of the evening, which is the Ohio Playwrights Conference. And, um, and so I was more than happy to go have lunch with him. And then when I heard the idea um, that it was about um, giving teens a forum to have a voice and say things that they would not normally say uh, in a really raw and uncensored way, um, that made me very excited. I love stories. Um, but I particularly love stories that people shouldn't ever say out loud. Those are my favorite stories, and that's a lot of what this evening is. Okay. All right, so this yeah. is um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a nice deep breath. Big glass of uh -huh. ice. Is it appropriate to read your text messages? No. Are you kidding me? Do you want me to read your emails? No, absolutely not. No. 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 Are you crazy? Don't even think about touching my phone. Are you totally committed to making things worse? Why don't you read your own texts? Oh, that's right. It's because you don't know how to use your own phone. <laughs> Give me freedom to find my art. You can't make your child or any human being be something specific. Encourage and inspire, but let go. Don't force me to do anything, everything, at once. I'm not a robot, and I have feelings, too. My future is very simple, because I have a limited choice in the talent that I possess. The only career that I can see for myself is in the military. Frankly, there is nothing else I'm capable of. My friends try to convince me not to go, because they think I will get killed. But I'm not worried about death. Everyone dies. If parents don't let go, more people will end up on bell towers with guns. Support me from the beginning. If you want to listen to Mozart music with me, don't make me listen to it by myself. Stay with me. Enjoy it with me. If you see that I don't like it, don't force me to like it. It will make things worse. Just try another artist. Yes, it might take time, but in the end, it's worth it. People say I'm magical. But magic ends. Like the last lines of a play, an actor, idolized and applauded, I stumble drunkenly outside, searching for a way to crawl back into my mother's womb, where no beats differ. You're away in some back room, speaking a language from the fourth grade, and you say to me, you say, kiddo, where are you going? It was awesome. It was like exactly what goes on. It, it was, was pretty true. cool. My name is Aaron Singer. Okay, Aaron Singer. what was your reaction to all this? Oh, I really liked it. I think I think I'm probably gonna go home and and get in an argument with my mom now. Why would you do that? About oh, because. Oh, I know. But I want her to understand me. I want her to get like where I'm coming from. I think the reason why the Youth Foundation helped us to feel, like, helped me to feel like I could make a difference was the support of adults. Like it wasn't just, it was really a combination, like bringing the, the mission, bringing youth and adults together in the community. And I think it was really the support of the adults to make you feel like even though you're so young, like you have so much opportunity, but you had the potential and they were there to help you, you know, bring it out. and in the process to help your community, which was great. So. Well, I joined the, the Youth Foundation in seventh grade, and I think maybe by eighth grade, we were putting out, we decided to put out the newsletter. Um, and I think I was sort of part of the head of that, like getting it organized and also um, designing, like I remember like helping to design the newsletter, which was 
really fun and write the articles and that really stood at, out because I ended up going to college for journalism so it wasn't if I hadn't had that experience I wouldn't even know that I was interested in you know writing or especially writing news which is what I did at the U Foundation. Well, um, since I graduated from college, I immediately started working at, about three days after I graduated college, I started working at a nonprofit. And I think just working at a nonprofit, like I really learned about nonprofits from working at the U Foundation and learned about, you know, instead of working at a company that just is trying to raise money or to make money, you're working at a nonprofit that's trying to help people and that really stood out to me. Um, so I've been working in a nonprofit called Futures and Options, which is a career development and internship program for high school students in New York. Um, so all of my work experience has been with youth. Even you know when I was in the Youth Foundation, I was a youth, but I was still helping youth, and I'm still helping youth. <laughs> um, so I think that's definitely affected my life, um, as well as the writing. Uh, I, I write the newsletter for the organization that I work at now, so it's carried over to that. And I also help with their marketing, PR, fundraising, their fundraising letters, all sorts of stuff. So I think that's the main way it's influenced me. Ready? I can't hear what you're saying. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? I think I think we're we're almost ready. <laughs> That's like the Mr. I think we're definitely ready. When the wind picked up, the fire spread, and the grapevine scene left for dead in the northern sky.